Hello everyone! A quick search of Stardew Valley will turn up numerous guides on how to take care of your animals. But I bet I'm the only one fun enough to do exactly the opposite. This is a video on how to abuse your animals in Stardew Valley. And the first thing we're going to need is some animals of our own. This one still eludes me. This one doesn't like me. This one kind of scares me. And this one's actually a robot. If I feed you some grass, will you come live on my farm? There's not even a lot of hills or anything. Okay, so what we actually need are some barnyard animals. Marnie, good news, you're coming to live on my farm. You can catch me at the saloon most nights. Yeah, Marnie, I know. The whole town knows. Obviously, before you buy any animals, you've got to buy a home for those animals. And the way to get these beautiful homes for your loving animals is from Robin the Carpenter. We're going to do both a coop and a barn, starting with the basics of both. And we're going to place those right here, because why not? And we're going to upgrade that all the way to the deluxe coop. Houses 12, coop dwelling animals, comes with an auto feed system, unlocks rabbits. And then the barn, my personal favorite, all the way up to the deluxe barn. Houses 12, barn dwelling animals, comes with an auto feed system, unlocks sheeps and pigs. Be sure to keep the door closed or Pam gets in. Now I'm sure most of us are very familiar with what these look like. Pretty big inside, nothing special on the outside. They do have the auto feeders, you can't fit 12 animals inside them. But the auto feeder doesn't work if you don't have a silo. And guess what I don't have. Now let's buy these lucky animals. For the coop, there's three animals we can buy. You can get dinosaurs in there, but that's a separate thing entirely. So we're going to start with a few chickens. And then the ducks. Happy adults lay duck eggs every other day. So then how often does an unhappy duck lay an egg? And finally, the rabbits. These are woolly rabbits. They shed precious wool every few days, lives in the coop. Also are quite delicious. So that's my coop all filled up just like that, 12 very happy animals. Now let's start on the barn. You can buy all four creatures for the barn, cows, goats, sheep, and pigs. Adults can be milked daily, a milk pail is required, and I just can't be bothered. Sheep. Adults can be shorn for wool. Sheep who form a close bond with their owners can grow wool faster. I have a feeling my sheep are going to kind of be the hairless variety. And everyone's favorite goats. Happy adults provide goat milk every other day. Not these ones though. And finally my personal favorite animal, pig. These pigs are trained to find truffles. That's why they're the best. They make money. Don't worry Marnie, these animals are in good hands. Now Marnie does also sell some very helpful things to keep your animals happy and warm. If you feel like actually ever feeding your animals, buy some hay for them. It's 50 gold each. A heater will keep them warm in the winter. Can't imagine why they need one of those. And is an assortment of other tools for gathering things from animals. But perhaps most interestingly is an ornamental hay bale. That way the animals can think they're getting fed when in reality they're slowly starving to death. In fact, you can build an entire enclosure out of ornamental hay bales. That way the animals will always feel like they're surrounded by food despite the fact that they're not. This is what's known as grass. Animals will actually eat this once they're let out of their barn. So we're just going to go ahead and remove this. Because if they're too good to eat their ornamental hay, they're too good to eat the grass that grows on the farm. When you first buy the animals, they're all in their small baby form, meaning they're absolutely useless and don't deserve to get fed. Now, if you want them to grow up faster and be somewhat useful, you have to pet them every day, you have to feed them every day. And considering there's like a thousand animals in here, that's just not going to happen. Same with all of these idiots. But fun fact, in this game, you don't actually have to feed your animals. They'll still grow up, it just takes a little bit longer. They don't need love or food. Also, they're a lot happier when you let them out of their pen every day and put them back in and close the door behind them. But yeah, that's going to happen. They're going to be inside farm animals. We'll check in on them in about two weeks. Fun fact, if something's blocking the door, they can't get out anyway. So the door can be open, they can be filling that fresh air, but they still can't escape. And they still look like baby-sized animals, so I'm going to continue to ignore them for now. But did you notice they haven't starved yet? Same with these, they're still going strong. Let's give them another week. Also, animals really don't like the rain. And they don't like when their doors open during the rain because it bothers them. So we're going to go ahead and leave the doors open all day. And they're still small animals, which is weird because I'm taking really good care of them. Roughly a month has passed and some of my animals are starting to actually be full-sized animals. There's even an egg in here. They're probably growing at inconsistent rates because they're slowly eating each other. Most of these still look pretty small, so I'm going to give them a little bit more time. The problem with using hay bales as fences is the debris can actually grow into it. If it's a fence, it won't do that. The fences will actually stop debris from growing. Hey, look at that. A single piece of grass is growing inside their enclosure. You know what? I think they can actually have that one. Whoever gets to it first. Ah, oh, the goat gets to eat. The only animal of mine to ever get fed. Well, it looks like some of the animals are starting to become full size. Those sheeps definitely look ready to have their wool taken off. And if you want little extra friendship points with the animals, you will do things like that. Milk the cows. They'll love it. Sure, the sheep. They'll love that. The pigs just want a little attention and they'll find you truffles. Again, that's why they're my favorite. The chickens seem to have grown up, the rabbits we're still waiting on, and the ducks. But you know what? I want them to come out and admire all this tasty food that's all around their pen. 
All that grass out there must look amazing to some starving hungry animals. I've decided it might be nice to let the animals get just a little bit closer to the grass. When they're down here, they can almost reach it, but not quite. Look at them trying. So now that we're here on the edge of winter, we're going to start what's called the Survivor Series portion of this video, and this is the part that I'm really excited about. And the reason that I'm so excited about it is because if the animals are out of the barn and you close the door behind them, they can't get back in. So you know what that means. It's going to be a long winter. And, as it turns out, this is the only way you can actually have one of your animals die in this game. So one by one, my precious animals are going to perish. I think a goat's going to be the last one standing. These animals are maybe tougher than I look. And now that it's a cold, freezing, frigid winter with no grass anywhere, I might as well let them be free-range animals because it just doesn't matter anymore. I'm totally okay with them exploring the entire farm now that there's not any grass for them to eat. They can enjoy this snow. Well, Survivor Animal Edition started on the first of winter, let's see how many animals we lose by the end of winter. We'll take it one day at a time to see which ones disappear as we go. I also love the fact that there's full-grown and baby animals. You'd think a predator would like the baby animals more. Day number two, still no casualties. They're playing hard to get. A solid week into winter, still no deaths. These animals apparently have the fortitude of Linus. Not sure if having baby animals is coming into effect, or maybe there just are no wild animals in winter because they can't survive. But I mean, the wild animals have lots of farm animals to eat. All they gotta do is come to the farm. I won't even stop them. Well, let's give it a few more days. I'm feeling lucky. I just love the image of the animals standing out there in winter. It makes my warm, cozy house feel that much better. I think we've got a winner. Who has the honor of being the first one eaten by wild animals? You know what? It's actually going to be hard to tell which one was consumed first. I'm only counting two sheep so far, so it might have been one of the sheep to go. And what are your thoughts on that? Brie looks stressed and paranoid today. It seems like something bad happened last night. Like its best friend getting mauled and devoured alive right in front of it? Yeah, probably. Linus, I'm going to need compensation for that sheep. Take this and stop eating my animals. Thank you. So it took a full 13 days for one of the animals to get eaten. I thought the odds were a little bit higher than that. Now in case you're wondering exactly what's happening, if the animals are stuck outside overnight, like all of my animals are, they have a pretty good chance of being devoured by wild animals. Normally, as long as the door of your barn is open, the animals will wander straight back in every night where they're safe. But these guys just don't have a chance. Well, it turns out that this event is a lot rarer than I thought it was going to be, because all winter I only lost one animal. I was hoping for pretty much all of them to be gone by now. So I guess they're going to eat some grass because I'm too lazy to set up another enclosure for them. Plus they're spread out all over the farm right now and I really don't want to corral them back together. I've just realized what part of the problem was. I have a leftover barn and coop up here in the corner of my field that I forgot because I built it 150 years ago. And I do know that the more buildings you have on the farm, the lower the odds of the animals showing up to your animals are. So I've got to get rid of all these and then my animals should start being consumed at an acceptable rate. Most people would go to the carpenter shop to destroy buildings. If you're at the end of the game, go to the wizard's tower. He's open pretty much at all hours and you can still destroy buildings here. Minus one deluxe barn. Minus one deluxe coop. And just because he doesn't need a roof. Well, that should make a difference. And now the animals are feeding themselves quite generously. Now they're going to be big and fat, much more desirable for a wild animal to eat. So let's try one night, see how this goes. I predict we're going to lose one animal tonight. All I want is my animals to get eaten by other animals. Is that too much to ask? Guess what happened last night? We lost another one. What is wrong with this goat? That thing's just making me uncomfortable. Rabbit, what happened last night? Goku looks stressed today. It seems like something bad happened last night. Something bad's gonna happen this night too. But I'm kinda hoping that goat's the next one to go because I don't know what's wrong with it. All these other animals should just take lessons from the horse. It'll stand here for a hundred years. Nothing bad is ever gonna happen to it. It's gonna be right there where I left it. And we have a third winner. I'm not sure what animals are being eaten at this point. It's too hard to tell when they're scattered all over the field, but I'm just happy knowing that one of them was eaten. Yep, getting rid of the barns seems to have done the trick. Plus it's raining out today, so the animals are going to be extra miserable. Boy, that sucks. I've still got Super Goat doing push-ups. Well, it's pretty rainy and cold out here, so I'm going back to bed. I think that I've lost four animals so far, so I've still got another 20 to go. I had 12 in each building to start with, a total of 24. I believe we got 20 left, so this is actually going to take a while. But at the very least, we're going to have some well-fed wild animals out there. My goal is to feed them enough and make them strong enough to eat Linus, and then move into the village. For reasons unknown, we now have three animals doing push-ups. Not sure what to make of them, but I'm just going to kind of let them do their thing for a while. Stitcher was left outside with the door closed last night. She's grumpy. That's a pretty ungrateful attitude for an animal that didn't get eaten alive last night. At this point, I've decided to put the animals back into their pen. That way I can keep track of them. I can see which ones are being eaten and which ones are still to be eaten. Oh, and once in a while, this is going to happen. The witch will show up. 
make a void egg in the coop. If you put that into the incubator, you get a void chicken. But we don't want to make more animals. We're trying to get rid of the ones we have now. Here we are, roughly a year since we started this little experiment. It's the 20th of fall and our animal numbers are still going pretty strong. We still have all four of the pigs. We lost one of the goats, we lost one of the sheep. It's mostly the smaller variety of creatures that are getting eaten every day. The grass is going through the fence pretty good, so the animals are actually eating. Not really anything I can do about it at this point, so I'm just going to let them eat for now. But we're coming up on winter, so they're going to start starving again. We didn't quite make it a year, it's a third of winter. I just wanted to check in the animals because so many were being eaten. It was actually a really good year for animal consumption. We're down to the final six, the last 25% of animals, so I predict within the next year they'll all be gone. We'll find out which the last one standing is. I said goat initially, but pigs are definitely the favorable matchup here. And with that, we're down to the final four, three pigs and one sheep. All right, that's another one down. I think we're down to our final two, unless I can't count. And with my luck, it's gonna be two pigs, which is good and bad. Nope, we have one pig and one sheep, the final two. It's only a matter of time now before we run out of animals, and I'm really excited about that. Hope you guys enjoy the heaters. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We're left with one animal after this event. And what is it today? That was the last day of winter, too. Now, our final animal. Is it a pig? Is it a sheep? Stay tuned to find out. It's a pig. Of course it's a pig. My favorite. And because it's the winner, the lone survivor of this little experiment, it gets to go inside tonight. Well, that was a fun little experiment that took years of my valuable time. All to determine that this, Zali, was a legendary pig who survived it all. Good for you, Zali. You get the honor of not being eaten. Marnie, you sold me defective animals. They all disappeared. 